Onk Live Insights is a video editorial program produced by Onk Live. Optune is a novel therapeutic approach for patients with glioblastoma. Optune was initially FDA approved in 2011 for patients with recurrent glioblastoma and most recently was approved in October of this past year for patients with newly diagnosed glioblastoma. Optune was used following its initial FDA approval in 2011 for recurrent glioblastoma and we often saw patients with recurrent disease in whom we would counsel regarding this therapeutic approach and then prescribe the device. Once the device became FDA approved for newly diagnosed glioblastoma, it's taken on a role in the discussion regarding therapeutic options in the upfront setting. We discuss the treatment approach for a patient with a newly diagnosed glioblastoma and include in the discussion since the most recent FDA approval a review of both the chemo radiation and subsequent maintenance temozolomide that we will be recommending for the patient for their newly diagnosed glioblastoma and also the option of using the Optune device once they've completed the chemotherapy and radiation phase of their initial treatment. One of the more exciting uh, developments in the last decade has been the development of what's called tumor treating fields with a device called Optune. This was first postulated about 12 to 15 years ago by an Israeli physicist who postulated that by applying an alternating electrical field between about 100 and 300 millihertz that we could interfere with cell division. The strength of this electrical current is about one to three volts per centimeter depth. And with this, um, what we seem to get is a ability of these electrical fields to interfere with the mitotic ability of the cell. It appears to work on a couple of different mechanisms, although the, the basic science and molecular biology of this device are still being worked out, frankly. Um, the leading hypothesis right now is that the electrical fields, and we've got two alternating electrical fields that line up the polar um, dipoles in the cell. So all molecules, including proteins in the cell, have an electrical charge on them. And some of these highly charged molecules tend to get lined up in these electrical currents and can't perform and can't get to their normal orientation. When the electrical fields are turned on, these highly charged molecules such as tubulin get lined up and can't polymerize, can't come together to form the microtubules that are used to help pull chromosomes apart during the mitosis portion of the cell division. In addition to interfering with the polymerization of tubulin, there are other highly charged molecules involved in attaching to the chromosomes and segregating them that seem to be involved. In addition to interfering with the ability of the chromosomes to pull apart properly, the electrical currents seem to interfere with the ability of the cell to divide into two. So if you think of the cell as being a big balloon that starts to get pinched in the center, these electrical currents concentrate around that pinch point in the center where the cells are about to divide into two daughter cells. And it, the electrical current drives some of the subcellular organelles to the center of that cleavage point and prevents disequal segregation of the chromosomes and some of the subcellular organs. When this happens, the cells either arrest in mitosis or bleb and start to undergo uh, apoptosis or programmed cell death. Those cells that don't undergo programmed cell death are often arrested there and bleb probably put some proteins up on the surface that aren't normally there and become exposed to the immune system. So it's a combination of this programmed cell death or apoptosis from failure of the chromosomes to segregate properly, failure of the subcellular organelles to segregate properly, as well as an immune mediated mechanism that seems to lead to the death of cells uh, under tumor treating fields. 
So tumor treating fields, after they were postulated and worked out a little bit in the Petri dish, an initial uh, study was done in Europe about uh, 10 years ago called the EF7 study. In that study, uh, which was done in Czechoslovakia, I believe, uh, about 20 patients were enrolled, um, and each of these patients were given the um, Optune device, which has a generator and a battery pack that weighs about six pounds. It looks like carrying around sort of a laptop over your shoulder or in a backpack. And the currents are delivered through some electrodes that are applied to the head. Each of the electrodes are about the size of a man's palm, and they fit on opposite sides of the head, side to side and front and back. And the currents vary between those paired electrodes on the sides and front and back, and they vary about every second. In patients who wore the device in the EF7 trial, and this was a mixture of both de novo and re recurrent, there was mostly recurrent glioblastoma, excuse me, um, they seemed to have a prolonged survival and didn't notice much toxicity. As a result of that, a larger study was designed called the EF11 trial for recurrent glioblastoma. This study um, closed uh, back in about 2011, and a total of uh, 216 patients were enrolled randomized one-to-one -one of those who got the uh, electrical device or the Optune device to treat the tumor as monotherapy versus those who had already failed radiation and chemotherapy and were on to their second or third line chemotherapy. And the physician who was involved in the treatment was allowed to choose what other therapy they liked, whether it be bevacizumab, CCNU, or any other agent. Of those 216 patients, randomized one-to-one -to, -one to Optune or the electrical treating fields versus the chemotherapy, we found near equipoise in that EF11 trial and that the uh, tumor treating fields seem to give the patients about equal survival to any of the chemotherapies out there, including bevacizumab, which was used in about half of the patients in the EF11 trial. And interestingly, there seemed to be a long tail in those patients with uh, the electrical device and that there was a, a minority of about 5 or 10 percent of patients who seemed to survive a long period of time. Based on that data and the lack of toxicity from the trial, the FDA in 2011 approved Optune for monotherapy for recurrent glioblastoma. Now many people um, started using the Optune either alone or in combination chemotherapy and the company that was involved in that trial did a large patient registry called the PRIDE data set um, that also seemed to show very good survival. Um, and some data that suggested patients who got this device who were bevacizumab naive, who hadn't yet seen the Avastin, tended to do a little bit better. And there was some suggestion in this database, and again, it was just a registry, um, that patients who got the device plus a chemotherapy seemed to do a little bit better. But that's certainly not what the FDA approved mechanism or the FDA approval was given for this. But based on those positive results, both in real patients in the PRIDE database as well as the EF11 trial, a new trial was designed in upfront glioblastoma called the EF14 trial. And what this trial was, was to try and use the Optune device in newly diagnosed glioblastoma. So in this uh, trial, again led by uh, Roger Stoop, of the Stu protocol, um, patients were randomized two to one to get the device versus not getting the device in addition to the standard therapy for glioblastoma. So the study was designed to enroll 700 patients, randomized two patients to one getting the device. Each of the patients would get their biopsy or surgical resection, undergo their radiation and chemotherapy with the temozolomide and 60 gray of radiation, and then Right after that is done, uh, within four weeks, they would get an MRI. As long as there was no progression, they were then randomized to wearing the device at least 75% of the time versus not wearing the device. So this was not a blinded study. Patients obviously got the device or didn't get the device, and people were not made to wear a sham device. And that's one of the critiques of the study by some folks involved. The patients were, uh, the study was powered such that in the intent to treat population, we were expecting to see a, a difference in progression-free survival at six months, and it was set up for an interim analysis after the first 315 patients had been monitored for at least six months after the device. That interim analysis uh, occurred in uh, November of 2014 and was presented at SNOW uh, about a year and a half ago. 
in that interim analysis of the initial 315 patients, what we saw is that progression-free survival uh, extended by about three months in the intent to treat population and overall survival by nearly five months. When you looked at our over 48% of the patients who were treated with the Optune device lived at least two years versus only 32% who had gotten the Stroop protocol alone. Now the other thing about this trial is that patients, once they did have some progression, were allowed to con were expected to continue on the device to a second uh, agent, and then after a second failure could go off, or after two years they were allowed to go off device. Um, the f because of the results of this, the uh, monitoring board decided that the study should be shut early after the results were presented at the Society for Neuro-Oncology in 2014, and the study was shut for accrual, um, with total accrual being 697, so only three short of the planned 700. But this was the first clinical trial for glioblastoma that's ever been shut early because of a positive result.